Hi everyone, welcome to In Between. This is a fun, exciting episode because we get to talk about the bad guys. The villain of every story. Duh. And this is the crew, Miss Tarantula, Mr. Shark, Mr. Piranha, Mr. Snake. Everyone copy. Copy, 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 copy. We're the bad guys. It's crime time, baby. Shark. We need a distraction. Do I get to improvise? Fine, please be subtle. I'm having a baby! Is there a doctor? Or perhaps several security guards that could leave their post and help me? And I'm joined by the director himself. Pierre Perifo. Hey, cool. How are you? Ça va? Ça va très bien. Yeah. <laughs> Je parle un peu uh, français, but that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no more French now. So you are the director of The Bad Guys. How on earth did that happen? Yeah, I mean, it was, um, you know, I've been, I've been an, anima an animator at DreamWorks for a very, very long time. I mean, I just arrived there in 2008. Um, directly from France, actually, it's the, you know, the, the only place I've been working in here. And, uh, and as an animator, you know, it was never on, really on my radar to actually direct anything. Um, but, mm -hmm. uh, but I kind of did a bit of every job where I just started, uh, you know, as an animator and then did some animation supervision, uh, supervision, mm -hmm. you know, supervising animator. And then I, I became a head of animation uh, for shows uh, that were Unfortunately, never really, you know, went to completion. That happens in studios. So, <laughs> yeah. and then at, with some of one of those those shows, we had done a lot of work developing characters, and ended up actually turning that all the work we had done into a, a short film, uh, which I directed with a couple of friends called Bilby. Mm -hmm. And I think that brought me back to the because before coming to the US, I directed a, or co-directed a TV show, and then and then some, of course, student films as you know, yeah. we all do. Uh, and remember, you know, the feeling that it, that it is to actually just tell a story, you know. And uh, so <clears throat> as the studio, if I could, after Bilby, direct something, but a longer mm -hmm. version of, you know, feature. and they, you know, they just had me look at different projects and then I and then I stumbled upon the first draft of Bad Guys and mostly the... Um, the the first book actually and that cover was so strikingly perfect in a way mm -hmm. because it was it was conveying everything that i loved about you know uh, animation like a love for anthropomorphized animals mm -hmm. uh, but on top of that they were wearing suits so there was like total you know <laughs> pop fiction reservoir dogs booze brothers you know yeah. you name it uh scorsese and all of these movies that i just love and and these directors that i admire and 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 I, and I immediately saw, you know, the cool wolf driving a car with mm. money flying and had just robbed the bank and whatnot. <laughs> and, uh, and that started from there, but then digging a little deeper, immediately also understood the big idea behind the books, which was, you know, those terrifying animals that are unjustly kind of judged mm -hmm. by all of us, you know, with no reason. We made stories and wrote stories about them. And, and why are we afraid of sharks? You know, what are mm. we afraid of wolves? And so they are pitted in that role and decide to go, you know, to change the, the vision the world has of them and uh, become good guys, except that yeah. they're really, really bad at it. And that, to me, that was a big idea. Mm. That, was a, that was a really big idea that I could connect with and the characters could totally just, uh, it was such an obvious thing and then the characters, you, we would connect with them. And so I think that's that started from there and started developing it a little bit, um, did some sketches, did beatboards. Uh, you know, there was a couple, you know, guys actually starting, you know, that, that had started some biz dev on that. Uh, mm -hmm. Luc Demarchelier, who's the push designer, was already kind of a, kind of a, you know, on there. And we started just bonding like big time. Mm -hmm. um, and then with Damon, the producer who had worked on the script, the script was actually, you know, conveying a lot of the humor of the books. Um, it was not exactly the story we ended up with, but but it had the the, the tone, you know, and uh, it kind of captured the tone and, um, and so I ended up doing a little trailer of like four minutes or so, okay, cool. just yeah. storyboards, yeah. get that together. Uh, and then with the script that presented visual presentation and the trailer, you know, pitched it to Margin Christine and, and they really liked it. And so that's how it started. And a few months later, you know, they were like, um, you have a vision, do you want to direct it? I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it happened. Yeah. But it was a long process, but never really, you know, yeah. uh, was, you know, dreaming of becoming a director i really wanted to be a really good animator and so yeah. but 
I don't regret it. It's amazing. It's just such a great job because you, mm -hmm. you do so many different things and you learn so much, you know. Do you think it's the storytelling aspect of it that you it like kind of draws you to the director's chair, uh, you know, rather than just like, why did you start doing animation? Was it for that reason or? No, when I started doing animation, it was really about uh, me and the movement. Uh, mm. Funny enough, I just made connections because of all these interviews asking me and why and how, and, and then you start making connections. Why? <laughs> Hang on, why? <laughs> and uh, before, we went, before deciding, discovering animation, I wanted to be a physical therapist. And then, oh, but okay, which has nothing to do with animation, of course. I always love to draw, but. But I think that's when I made the connection. I was like, oh my God, I'm all, I've always been interested in motion and the mm. human body. And uh, and I think that's what, you know, drew me to animation. Like, frankly, the very first, when I realized, and I was very old and very stupid, but when I, when I realized that I there was people making those drawings, you know, and <laughs> that was actually crafted. I was 17 or 18, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh my God, hang on a minute. <laughs> I bump. <laughs> what the fuck? Somebody's doing this. <laughs> I like that you say, you know, you're attracted to drawing the, the human figure and it, you've directed a film about animals. <laughs> a film with animals. Yeah yeah, 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 no, that's true. But I mean, if you look closely, I mean, they're really humans. With yeah, yeah, yeah. Heads. of course. Um, but um, no, but it's motion in general, you know, and there's something that, I, you know, I realized I was really good at just observing the movement and, uh, and then conveying emotions and stuff. So, but but really was in France. It was the '97 was uh, Tarzan's release, and Glenn had done all those that the production from Tarzan in Paris, you know, in Montreux, in the studio and Disney studio there. And then because he had done that, I think there was a lot of you know f buzz around it. And then I, I ended up seeing you know line test and pencil test, which was the very first one that I had ever seen, and wow, him Tarzan. just animating Tarzan. Tarzan. Yeah, on the trees, on the branches, yeah. and I was like, "Man, like, yeah, this is magic. This is magic." Um, and so that's really what sucked me into it. And um, and then so yeah, uh, it's just uh, animation is my my background, my passion. Um, but as a director, I think you're right. I mean, slowly it became about telling a story and mostly, you know, conveying a message, mm -hmm. especially for you know, in animation, mostly usually for younger generations. And mm -hmm. I think it's so important, you know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but in this case, it's a message about inclusion and redemption and, mm. and, and giving second chances and just really being able just to uh, see beyond the first appearance of somebody, you know, mm -hmm. what, what, what's deep, deeper, what, what is the And so I think that's that's in the end, that's ultimately what what, what I'm really attracted to, obviously. Now. You know, a lot of the time people, you know, rally against the idea that, you know, the animation is a genre for kids, which obviously we both know it isn't, but like... Um, there's a great honor in the fact and a great privilege in being able to present stories directly to children in that way. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's incredible to have their ear in, in a medium like that. Like it's super important, like because there's such a power in animation then beyond just like obviously we know we want like there's adult stories and messages and everything, but like that is such a great gift to have in at the same time, directly talking to Completely. Directly to them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we make these films for uh, ourselves and, you know, our friends and everything and what we want to have fun with. Um, but I'm curious, like DreamWorks, obviously, the, the the style seems to have kind of evolved a lot. Like there's a lot of creative evolution in the studio, um, especially during the production of, of Bad Guys. And I'm curious, could you talk a bit about that? It's a combination of so many things at the same time. I mean, I, mean, I think as artists, uh, me specifically, but I think I'm not the only one, but like with mm -hmm. all creators, I think it's been a while since we people have, have been wanting to see different imagery on screen, especially, you know, mm -hmm. the CG medium. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, since, you know, Toy Story, the first one up until now, we've seen mostly the same type of rendering. We've been striving to, to, to you know, the, the, the tech has been pushing and the artistry has been pushing towards seeing again the same type of perfect lighting renders. And, and, yes, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, realistic cameras and... And, um, but I think, you know, a big part of the filmmakers and, and artists have also wanted to be to explore a little bit what else can we do with the CG medium. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it's been brewing for a long, long time. I think there's a new mm -hmm. generation of, of filmmakers that want to see that happen more. 
uh, I'm definitely a part of it. I've been, you know, wanting to see how can we just do something that's more illustrated, you know, like, yeah, yeah. can we bring some, uh, some, some inspiration from illustration, from traditional animation, you know, can we be a bit more, you know, precise in the way we craft our images, you know, like guiding the audience's eye and just losing some of the details. When you paint something, you don't paint everything like ever realistic. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people mm-hmm. do, but like oftentimes it's more like a, a feeling that you're trying to capture, you know? And yes. so yeah, it yeah. was kind of the idea from the beginning was like, how do you, kind of blending a little bit of my influences of like graphic novels, you know, because I grew up with a lot of them back in France. Uh, of course. Of my yeah. love of anime, you know, yeah, yeah definitely. And so I think it's it's coming from there. I wanted to see different kind of character designs as well, you know, it's like mm-hmm. why do we always do the same pupils and the same eyes and the same rendering and like with, you know, cornea and whatever, your iris and stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, just two dots like we do in 2D, you know, why not? You know, mm-hmm. and so there was a lot of that in what I wanted to see. And I've been wanting to see that for a while. And then I think it's the combination of so many things because, um, I mean, first of all, having been given the opportunity to actually make this film. And then secondly, because um, Margie, Margie was her first movie, you know, as the head of the studio, mm. uh, Margie Cohen, and she wanted to, um, I think she wanted to just uh, dust off and just, just uh, you know, just, make DreamWorks progress in a mm. in a new direction. So I think the combination of both things, just when I pitched her the idea of just getting for a different look, she was like, absolutely. And then of course, before that, the reason also mm-hmm. that that could happen is because uh, frankly, Spider-Verse happened mm. and uh, it allowed the the studios to see, oh, there's a, we can do it, you know, and yeah. they've Sony yeah. tried it, it's amazing. Uh, and then, and they have, they've done it again with Mitchells, which uh, mm-hmm. when it came out, we were full on in bad guys. We we're like, oh my God, this is great. You know, it's, <laughs> it's great. And it's frustrating at the same time because <laughs> they've done it really well again, uh, but awesome, you know? And so I think those, yeah. those circumstances and those events, you know, uh, allowed us to be there now, you know? And then you had to crack the whip and say, come on, guys, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, these, these are doing it really good. We need to do better. Yes. You know? <laughs> I mean, they are amazing. They're absolutely amazing. And just admire them and, and what they're trying to do and where they're pushing. And, but I think it's not the last, you know, I think this really is a trend that's going to start, you know, where mm-hmm. CG animation can really explore. And the, 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 mm-hmm. the race to ultra realism is over. I, I, I believe yes. deep down yeah, yeah. just because... Yeah. I mean, the Lion King is to me the pinnacle of how realistic you can go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they've done it incredibly well. Yeah. Um, now, what? What else? You know, what? Yes. Where can we? Go, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. What else is there in the art form to offer? Which is frankly so much. Like, and it, it's so, so interesting to think about. Like, you know, obviously the the design direction and everything, but you've got pipelines that are set up for realistic CG. <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, so how do you then cram all these decisions down? I mean, you're so right. Actually, the uh, DreamWorks equipped itself. Like they, they, we wrote a whole new rendering uh, engine. You know, Whoa. in the last six years or so, like Dragon Three is like the was the first one that used mm-hmm. it, uh, and, and you see the, how detailed and beautiful it is. You know, but really, really using like realistic, you know, ray tracing and, and all mm-hmm. light. That, you know. And I, I come in and I'm like, yeah, guys, I don't want this. I want something much more. It's like, oh, come on. And I don't want the perfection of it. And I want, I want all the edges of the, of the, any, any objects we have to be like, feel like it's been lived in, feel like it's been handmade, you know, so like mm. break up all the engines and uh, edges and then don't give me the perfection the computer will give you, you know, and, yeah. uh, uh, and in terms of animation, just, I don't want you guys a video reference and just copy your reference, you know, like mm. we've been tending to do, and Disney has been, and like we, like all every yeah. studio has been tending to do that, maybe again, maybe besides Sony, and even then, you know what I mean? And say, can we push a style? Can we define a new style? You know, mm-hmm. uh, I want graphic intrusions and I want like feeling like it's painted and all the, all the textures is more like brush strokes than photographs, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And so it was going against where, you know, the, 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 the software and the engine wants to go, uh, and it was like up to like all the artists that we have on the team that are incredibly talented and really willing to do it as well, by the way, to actually just take this and bend it and just force it to go somewhere else. Um, and, and, but in the end, so it's not designed to do this. 
Uh, but yeah. I think slowly we're gonna make we're gonna create tools that allow to do this kind of stuff more easily. Big time. It, it's a huge movement, really. You know, and even even free graphics engines like you know Blender and stuff with you know all the kind yeah. of tune shading and everything that they're yep. establishing and you know. Um, What's that grease pencil and, and everything? Like, there's a real, oh my God. yeah, want and strength for people to be able to capture a style but still have it in that 3D realm, which is really, really interesting, yep. you know? Totally. And it's funny you talk about, you, you know, animation and, and influences of motion and stuff. And what really jumped out to me when I was watching this is definitely things like Sherlock Hound or, you know, Lupin the Third like directly when he's like swimming through the air to try and get to the snake and stuff like that I was just I could just see <laughs> I could see the scenes and I was like this is so good to see because it's it's like you said it's not live action referenced because people would break their backs trying to do stuff like that you know it's it's so <laughs> illustrative it's so it's so um cartoony i think is the term actually i would use you know it's it's so different like how did what was the decision to kind of draw in those styles yes totally um i mean you you, you nailed it i mean those those are some of the influences it's funny because today i just the japanese trailer uh wow. and it's like it's taking all of what i've what we've tried we've tried to do and just like condensing it to such a you know, a perfect little Japanese little thing. I mean, of course, you 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 nailed it. You know, you have Shallow Count, Cowboy Bebop, Fully Cooly, mm. and 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 a lot of those. You know, Japanese, uh, and mm. of course the old, kind of old school Miyazaki Lupin and Kelly Osso. So that's yeah. there definitely in the animation style. There's also a lot of the French, um, you know, Gobelin style that I you know grew up with because you know it was there. Um, Ernest and Celestine is in there. You know, you have some mm. asterisks in there. I mean, like mm -hmm. it's a con, it's a, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a mix of all these. Uh, what I grew up with, really, you know. Uh, yeah. So, French graphic novels, animation, and and animation, and uh, and uh, and obviously some Japanese uh, anime influence um, mm -hmm. in the designs of characters. You know, you ha you see a little bit of uh, Akira Toriyama. You know, ah, did okay. uh, Dragon yeah, Ball. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the old, the very first Dragon Ball, super cute, super charming. That mm -hmm. comes from there quite a bit. Wow. Um, but also, you know, same thing, like the big bad fox from uh, from uh, Benjamin Renner. I was about to, I was literally about to say about, you know, yes, the Grand totally. Renard. Like that's a incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really, really just an incredible piece of work. Yeah. And you can definitely feel it totally. from the graphic style. Yeah. Completely. That and, and Ernest and Celestine again. Mm, uh, exactly. But you would also have some bit of Blanc, you would have some Larsenet, you have like all those like Arab, like graphic novelists that I just grew up with and admire and just love mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in their style, in their humor, in, this, in the treatment. Yeah. So, but that's something that, you know, and, and I surrounded myself with a few uh, European and French uh, people that understand this. You know, whether it's in the art department. Yeah. Some people call that an invasion, you know. <laughs> a little people, bit, a little bit, yeah. but like a, a, a cute, a cute invasion, like okay. a nice one. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea was to really understand how we could convey that style to, uh, to uh, artists that don't mm -hmm. know it necessarily, you know. And mm -hmm. so how can we just convey this on the screen and also kind of, teach the teams a little bit how to interpret this you know mm -hmm. and so in the end you have that that, that movie that has a blend of everything because it's not just that obviously there's a lot of uh, you know my my love of the you know american style of uh, animating mm -hmm. which yes. is a bit more fleshed out and a bit more detailed in terms of the it's a little less illustrative it's more in a way more organic more re realistic mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. so it's a blend of all this um but but it was the intent, definitely was the intent. Yeah. And so we ended up in an hybrid style uh, that to me looks incredibly cool, you know, and, uh, and incredibly playful. It's very charming, it's very appealing. And, and I think people definitely see it on the screen, you know, definitely see it on the screen, which I'm super proud of. Big time, big time, yeah. Why do you think that like the, these kind of influences and styles haven't made it into, you know, a more mainstream CG features before? I think, I mean, again, I think it might be a cultural thing, maybe because, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, a lot of directors are not versed into this style specifically, or most mm -hmm. of the studios are not versed into this kind of style. Also, mm -hmm. because I think the Japanese influence is really starting to hit the US now. Yeah. 
uh, yeah. thanks to streaming platforms, really. You know, whether it's Crunchyroll, or of course Netflix, who's like, you know, just bringing a lot of animes to the to the to the US. Yeah, I grew up. You probably in, in Ireland. I don't know if you did, but like for me, I grew up with it. You know, when yeah, I was yeah. a kid, we had TV anime, Japanese TV shows. Miyazaki was there all the time, so mm-hmm. I know it. It's just part of my upbringing in a way yes but yeah, here yeah. it was way less uh known you know it was much more you had to search for it if you mm-hmm. wanted to find it um completely different you know so i think it's come it's starting to hit now and people are starting to realize oh my god japanese animation is just absolutely incredible mm-hmm. uh it's and they are like incredibly talented at every level in terms of the the the, the risk they take in storytelling and what they can mm-hmm. do um and so it's starting to sink in. There's a real, real true dedication to the art over there yeah. uh, as well as here. I mean, but different, like different approach to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think people, like, I love that it's cross-pollinating now. It's really mm-hmm. starting to do that. And we're going to see it more and more. I'm pretty sure. Yes. So, I mean, Red Panda, uh, Red Panda, Turning Red had some of that influence as well. You know? That's so interesting. Do you think, like, obviously you've been uh, working in LA nearly since the start of your animation career. Like, do you keep tabs then on, Obviously, you must if you know Le Grand Méchant Renard and stuff on on what's happening in European animation. Because I know you've a back, you studied in Goblins and the Mille Cole École. You know, like you've you had that uh, upbringing. It seems like a strange yeah. word, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it is. Yeah. <laughs> you had yeah, that. No, right. uh, you've had that upbringing up through that. But like European yeah. animation, specifically French animation, is a very specific, like different graphic style but also storytelling elements as well like do you still watch that and you feel like it influences you or do you feel a bit removed no i mean of course you're a little bit more removed because you don't yeah. have access to those as easily as mm-hmm. i mean I'm, I'm lucky because i'm a member of the academy so every year you would see you know uh those short films coming up like to me it's that and it's short films really frankly just yeah. that i love watching because mm-hmm. uh Short films allow you to really try things much more easily than features. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I find them incredibly fascinating because like, like if you look at the selected, like the nomination for short films this year, you had one that is stop motion with porcelain and cut out paper, mm-hmm. you know, or card, 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 uh, card box, yeah, whatever, for the backgrounds. <laughs> one that is like a uh, felt stop motion, one that is mm-hmm. pure 2D, like in the Ralph Steed style or, you know, yeah. Richard Williams, whatever. Yeah. And then you have uh, the windshield wiper who's like a yeah. blend of something in CG with like some, it's like, it's so varied, it's so vast. Um, and all of them, I mean, you look at, again, I love watching the Goldman short films as well, because like, mm-hmm. it's always incredibly well done. So super funny yeah. to watch. They don't necessarily play with techniques as well, but at least design, the sense of design and animation, they're always trying to push these, these kids. Uh, and it's annoying to see them do that so well. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> Just like, God damn, but, they're good. Yeah. <laughs> they're good. Yeah, they're really good. And then but there's so many other schools that do an, an incredible job. So to me, mm-hmm. student movies, short films. Um, and I think that's what I love the most is like doing a bit of research of like, what can we, what do I love? Mm-hmm. And it's not just in animation. It could be, it could be also uh, illustration books. It could be, mm-hmm. um, you know, it could be graphic novels. It could be anything that just what is that style that we could use and just I would love to see work, you know, on a screen. Yeah. Um, and Instagram is incredible for that because mm-hmm. you can really just see so uh, our station Instagram, all of these. You're like, yeah. wow, my God, like, is so many yeah. different styles. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But recently, I felt like in the last ten years, it's changing a little bit now, but like. You know, there was that whole trend of people doing a little bit of all the same styles, kind of, a, I call it the Disney style, you know, it's yeah, like yeah. incredibly appealing, but always the same thing. I was like, I would love to see something different a little bit, you know, and I think mm-hmm. to me, students are are great for that because they don't, they don't hesitate to push things, you know. <laughs> yeah, they don't know any better yet. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, exactly. But that's great. There's no, there's no formatting happening at the time, you know. Exactly. You know? Yeah. You know, they say that, um, storytelling let's say you know crafting a story is is letting your audience know where the characters are going to get end up but surprising them as to how yeah. they get there you know let's and if you look at something like the bad guys how then was that a difficult process to kind of eke that out throughout each kind of iteration that you went through or like from start to finish did you have that idea well we had the idea that they were going to stop bad and end up good 
So that's, <laughs> that's not giving you much, buddy. <laughs> yes, and of course you have to craft it. No, it was, inc- it was really difficult for, yeah. because, because we had a first draft of the script, and, uh, but it was not playing with the highest drawing. It was not playing with uh, mm-hmm. all those codes that I kind of wanted to see. So when I arrived with that idea of just, oh, let's make it big heist movie, like Tarantino for kids, whatever, or like, mm-hmm. again, or Soderbergh for kids. Mm-hmm. It was not embedded in the script. And so mm-hmm. with the story team and our writers, we had to just really retrofit everything. But making a high genre type of movie with an emotional journey of your yeah. characters and these, because usually mm-hmm. they, they don't have that. Ice movies is really about the plot and the, mm-hmm. and the magic trick at the end. Um, that was, that was, <laughs> it is, it is. And, and this is why it we is, love them so much. But it, 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 this is also why it doesn't quite work with younger audiences too, because mm-hmm. I mean, it's not that it doesn't work. I mean, my kids love Ocean Eleven, but of character in, in an emotional arc so that the, the, the audience and the younger audience can really relate to those characters. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, I think that puzzle of trying to figure out, you know, the whole, you know, uh, you know, heist element of, uh, of the film, uh, that was tricky. But it was incredibly fun to do as well. I, I, I equated to like a giant Rubik's cube and and trying to just make things fit into. And of course, you have to deal with like, okay, this you know needs to favor the character's emotional journey. This needs to favor the plot. And then you have notes. And so, yeah, no, not 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 as simple as oh, that was all there and we made it work. Yeah, clearly not. It's not never the case. You know, never the case. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, the the opening. Uh, the op- why am I struggling to say this? The opening part where you kind of meet all the characters and you've got the uh-huh. the crew call basically like a heist yeah. film, you know, um, wedged in there. But when they put on their sunglasses and they start, you know, they hit that song, stop, drop, roll. I there was an interview with you where you said that like I think you were talking about the actors and how they were mainstream but slightly on the edge, and that everything. <laughs> that you're pulling into this film is kind of mainstream, but slightly on the edge, you know, so it, it, it appeals still to the mainstream. And that's why I'm so fascinated then at something like the choice of music in this, because it's a song that sounds like I should have heard it a hundred times, but never have. And it's, never. it's mainstream, but isn't, you know, and no. it works so well. Like, how has that never been in a film before? That's to me, that's Tarantino. That's his genius. He yeah. brings songs that you that become cult, mm. but before he does it, nobody heard of them or yes. nobody remembered. I mean, you know what I mean? Like the Monsieur Lou, for instance, you're like, hang on, mm-hmm. what, wait, like everybody equates it to Pulp Fiction, yes. but yeah, before yeah. Pulp Fiction, you're like, I'm, I'm, I mean, I was too young, but I'm pretty sure it was not as famous <laughs> as it is now. You know what I mean? Like, so he does that so well. He's really good at it. And I think that's where it came from. That song, weirdly enough, is a song that I've been uh, listening to for a long time. And I thought it was kind of famous, but it was not. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like on this one, maybe a little bit of luck, frankly, yeah. just to sustain what I was saying. Um, but, uh, but, uh, and I always loved it for its energy and, and that, that band is incredible. You know, they're, they're yeah, really, yeah, really yeah. good at just, just giving you that, that mm-hmm. it's so joyful. It's so fun. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think why I loved it so much be- was because it was sustaining a tone that I wanted to see in this film. It's like the joy and the not taking yourself seriously because we yeah. never take it yeah. seriously in this film. Uh, and sometimes when you, know, you have songs that are much more serious, you could feel the seriousness. But this one mm-hmm. was like, no, it's just about a you know, big explosion of joy. Um, and you ha- I had the right energy. So I actually bought it, you know, version of this sequence with that in my head. Um, and I wanted to see them actually sing over it, you know? And it's funny because that scene, uh, which is, we could have easily stopped at the, at the title and mm-hmm. they would have been back home. Yeah, yeah. But like, like, kind of like what Wolf says, I want to do, I want to see more, you know? I want to see yeah, more yeah. of that chase, you know? <laughs> and and it's, 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 it's quite selfish in a way because storytelling wise, it's almost too long that opening, but it's so fun. That you yeah, just yeah, yeah. don't care, you know. Uh, and uh, we all wanted to see more cultures in the uh, and the audience is like forgiving that regards, like, oh wait, let's stay, let's do a little bit longer, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. and that song completely sustained that feeling. I think, you know, mm-hmm. um, 
and, and and then after that we've tried to do that for kind of every song you know it's like the the black keys and howling for you is not something they would have seen in an animated film for kids and yeah. uh yeah uh, the, the, the black pumas at the very opening uh and then we have we also crafted a few different you know original ones in there brand new day at the end is not necessarily you know the your classic hip-hop pop kind of song that you hear these days nowadays on mm-hmm. animated mm-hmm. features you know so it was always thought out this way and every like at every step of the way was the same the same you know the same intent it was like can we make this feel different even the end the end credits like the main on ends with the names appearing uh, you, you've seen the whole film right so even yeah. the names appearing on top of an, an a full-on full-fledged uh sequence animated mm. and telling a story mm. it's so reminiscing of live action films yeah yeah, um, yeah you don't see it in an animation you know no. you usually have your dedicated end credit sequence um and uh this one was like oh no we're still sitting story and this the, the names appear on, on screen so all of that is part of the same idea of like okay let's uh let's pay homage to those films that we love and mm-hmm. at the same time let's let's be honest and 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 try to push things a little bit you know, like like you said like like be on the edge a little bit I think I think you've really hit the nail on the head there in the idea of paying homage but being honest is kind of the formula to create something new. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, definitely from when I saw the trailer drop and the reaction people have to it, it was so interesting because it's like, now I know you reference something like Spider Verse and Mitchell's versus the Machine, but now you're within that category of people excited about new things with animation and the quote unquote new, but everything in it is is like homage, but you know, not new at all, but honest, you know. Yeah, it's homage. It's our take on it, you know, but it's really respecting or trying to understand how you craft those kind of movies. And really respecting what others have done. It's never been to be a parody of a heist film or a Mission mm-hmm. Impossible, whatever. It's like, mm-hmm. no, I love these movies. And we love these movies. And yeah. I really want to can I can we introduce those movies and those that that genre to the younger audience, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would that be wouldn't that be cool to have a heist movie for a younger audience and this one be the first one, kind of thing. You know what I yeah. mean? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really the intent from the beginning. Uh, so proud of it because, because again, you know, I think I hope respected, you know, what these other giant of filmmakers have, have done before. But uh, yeah, it was never it was never meant to be a parody. Never. No, and it definitely doesn't come across that way. Like a parody is not a word that ever entered my mind when it came across. Right. I felt yeah, it felt totally like you know. this is an honest, real world. Well, real quick animals and the humans bit whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. real world within its own rules um, and yeah. that they, they're definitely just these are the characters and this is exactly what they would do you know it's not like a, you know that a mission impossible scene where someone's dangling or something like that exactly. you know, the homage is much subtler especially the opening is totally tarantino you know um right. which is perfect you know because oh, you don't yeah. you wouldn't see that anyone else no but it's it, it was like uh if you have seen this movie, you know. If you haven't, you can't really tell. You know? <laughs> yeah. no, if you haven't, this is, we did it first. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. But yeah. <laughs> not, not that diner scenes haven't done, been done before, but this, yeah. like like that, you know, it's like, a, it's, it's an incredibly uh, loving wink, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tell me a bit about the world then itself in regards to the, I know you said you love anthropomorphized animals. Um, but it just like there doesn't seem to be any rules in regards to like what is an animal and where the humans appear. Could you tell us a bit about the decisions there? Okay, going back to the influence of the character design. If you if you if you mm-hmm. read Dragon Ball, it's a world where you have dinosaurs and animals and humans. And yeah, you don't know why. <laughs> Never explained, <laughs> but it's there and it's freaking awesome. You know. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of stems from here, from there. For me, the other main reason, frankly, was. I, if it was just a world of animals, the problem we would have faced would be these core group of animals are predators and the other ones are afraid of them because they are going to eat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's and it's been done before in another yeah. big movie, we know. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but to me it was really playing on fears and not the predator prey it was really like the phobias and the stories we tell about we tell ourselves about these animals wolves and sharks and snake and uh and we are as humans are the one telling ourselves these stories not mm -hmm. the other animal the other animal <laughs> what you know what is again the, the example so I was, what is like, yeah. you know a, a yeah, giraffe yeah. how would a giraffe react to piranha they couldn't care less you know <laughs> Maybe, may, or, or, or to a, or mm. to a shark, you know, they, they would yeah. never cross. Uh, but us as humans, we project our fears into these guys, and we wrote those stories. Um, and so mm. this is why it was important for us to kind of have, in a way, I don't see these core bad guys as animals. I see them as, you know, just villains, you know, and just mm. humans. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and they wear the mask of these scary animals. Um, but so we can go a little deep in, into this, but that's why I think we, I wanted that, that world to be, um, you know, divided between humans and animals. I mean, now most people have the question or ask that question because it's just five animals and it happens to be the main ones. Um, yeah. But, uh, and, and, and same thing on the other end of the specter, uh, spectrum, the, you know, marmalade is a guinea pig because he's cute and, and he's defying the, he's representing cuteness, but in a twisted way, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we fall into his trap because he's so cute and therefore he's, he's, he's obviously good. Well, mm. maybe there's be something beyond that. But Diane also falls into, you know, the category of the bad guys. She's, she's, she's a tricky fox and we associate mm -hmm. her character, her, her animal with some sometimes uh, not as uh, flattering traits, you know, personality. Mm -hmm. So this is where it came from. But at the same time, like, let's not explain it. Who cares? We don't yeah. need to explain that, you know? Yeah. And so the same way we don't need to explain how you know they can put on a fake mustache and nobody recognizes them who cares let's let's buy this and that's fine. and i think yeah, that's yeah. why it, it it works you know people are like yeah. oh okay i'm on for the right time yeah yeah, yeah. why can a shark dress up as this man's father you know yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and it works it's so over the top that it works yeah. you know yeah exactly yeah, yeah yeah the third reason frank was also we've seen fully, you know, full animal worlds. And we've seen that before. And I think it was like a mean for us to just, okay, let's do something again, a bit different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you can definitely play with the, um, the graphic, uh, I don't know why I keep saying graphic, but the, you know, how posed out the characters are like, cause it's a very strong posing consistently yeah. throughout like it's very very dynamic posing it's very cartoony yeah. it's very reminiscent of you know gendy's work on on hotel transylvania that kind of stuff yeah, yeah. like it, it it feels very well defined in that in those kind of cartoon worlds um but listen i think our time is coming up here uh thank you so much for a tour of your house and uh your time <laughs> <here>. <laughs> it's a beautiful home i'm telling you now yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but congratulations on the movie um i can't oh. wait for people to see it even though i haven't had anything to do with it you know? but <laughs> it's so much fun you know congratulations Thanks, so much yeah it means a lot it was a pleasure speaking with you you too man take care thank you so much bye